Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm so glad you're here. I'm Lisa Louise Cook. This is Elevenses with Lisa, hence the cup. This is my mug today. I'm doing the official Elevenses with Lisa mug today. It's available in the YouTube merch. Our schedule today, breakfast, genealogy, Elevenses with Lisa, lunch, genealogy, dinner, genealogy. It keeps you on track. It just does. It keeps you on track. Um, today, we are going to talk about ancestry tips. And that seems to be a worthwhile topic because at some point, I think we all try Ancestry.com for our genealogy research. And who doesn't want some tips that are going to make it just a little bit more effective in your searching? So that's what we're going to do today. Um, kind of fun seeing all of your video, well, not all of your videos, but many of the videos in uh, the opening credits that you saw. Thank you to everybody who sent in a video. That was so much fun. You just made my inbox like light up <laughs> all week long. I had a big smile on my face. Bill can attest to that. So that was just actually just a couple of them. But today we're going to be awarding one of you uh, a, a prize, a Genealogy Gems Premium Membership. So we're going to be doing that after we do Ancestry. But let's jump into Ancestry. Let's talk about some of these strategies and then we can um, answer some of your questions and of course, award our winner. So let me see here, over here at Ancestry. I think I have the screen right this time. <laughs> I know last week I got it a little bit off. Um, we're gonna be talking about some top tips uh, for searching at Ancestry. And these are going to be all in the show notes. So don't worry, you were asking about uh, show notes in the, in the uh, chat the live chat this morning. And yes, we have them all on my website. And so uh, if you're a premium member, you'll get a downloadable version, a PDF that's ad free, but everybody gets access to all of the notes. And there are some really um, good ones that you might want to uh, print out, maybe keep them by your, by your computer. One of the things that we notice is that we all have our usual starting place, right? And if we keep looking in the same places, we keep finding the same stuff. So we have to kind of spread out. We have to get kind of get past just using the search and um, finding more because there is so much more to find on Ancestry.com. Uh, and, and I'm not a, a hyper expert. I don't work for Ancestry, uh, none of that kind of stuff. But this is just uh, things that I have discovered along my own journey that I think might help you out as well. And of course, when I first started, I did the same thing. You just go to the search uh, under search in the menu and you have all collections, which kind of gives you that universal search box. And that means that you're searching their records, but you're actually not searching all the records. Did you know that? You're not. There's a lot more at Ancestry. And in fact, another usual place that we go to, in addition to the search field, is the family trees. And of course, we look for hints that are on our family trees, but did you know that only 10% of ancestry records are included in hints? So you might have a lot of hints, but they may not be, you know, the most, the best, the most exciting, the most interesting records. So a great place to start. It's a usual place to start, but certainly not the place to finish. I want to kind of expand things. And one of the places we can expand and find more is in the card catalog. Now I'm guessing I know you there, we have a lot of experienced uh, researchers here on the show, but we have a lot of newbies and a lot of people in between. And at some point, you may have kind of checked out the card catalog. But I'm guessing it might not be kind of a go to place on a regular basis for you. And I know for a while there, for me, it really wasn't. But I'm finding more and more that it's really becoming another go-to. So you can find it under search in the menu. And we just click on card catalog. We kind of go past all the, the standard um, topics that we have there, like the census and the birth and marriage and death. And when we get to the card catalog, this is truly the one place where you can actually get access to anything and everything that Ancestry has. If you think about it, there, there really isn't any other place on the website to do that but here. Because whether 
um, things are indexed or not, whether they're browse only, whether or not they're included in hints, all of it is listed in the card catalog. That's what makes it so valuable. So, um, okay, so this is where we're gonna expand our search. What kinds of stuff could you find? What are we gonna see, Lisa, that we're not seeing in the other things that we're doing? Well, these are just a couple of examples. Uh, how about old maps? Lots of old maps at Ancestry. Also county histories, regional histories, not just for the US, uh, postcards. If you subscribe to my newsletter, then you have seen the, um, I think it was about two weeks ago, I did an email uh, newsletter about postcards that I had found and been searching at Ancestry, which really got me on this topic, thinking about this. And it was so fun to find postcards that kind of illustrated this family history that I have been developing and working on for so many years. So lots of hidden treasures. Let's take a look at a couple of them. And along the way, we're gonna talk about some of the ways um, that you can search, maybe vary up your searches and some quick tips. For maps, if we go on the card catalog and we look down on the left-hand side, you're gonna see those topics, right? So they have some topics where they have lots of records and it kind of helps prompt you a little bit about what the possibilities are. You can certainly just search in the title or the keywords, but I'm gonna click on maps. And here, um, here's just one example of one of the collections that they have in this map collection, the US indexed county land ownership maps. And they span all the way from 1860 to 1918, nearly 7 million records um, extracted from about 1200 maps. So it's a nice size collection. Best part, it includes some of the property owner's names, might be your ancestor, uh, indicates the township and the county boundaries. It can include photos of county officers, landholders, and some buildings and homes. So this is really that social history of the area where your family lived. And that's just one collection. When we look at this collection, we um, access it through the card catalog. There is a search field and that's great. Um, you can go straight in and try and do names and, and places and keywords. But over on the right hand side, take a look when you're particularly when you're looking at items that are in the card catalog. That right hand column is actually going to have some additional prompts for you that vary depending on the collection. So some collections will have them, some won't. There's lots of different variations, but in this case, they have a drop-down menu where you can right out of the gate, go down and select the state. And then you can just browse. It may be that there's just a couple of options. And so that's kind of a nice way to go about it. Um, particularly if you do run a search and nothing comes up right out of the gate, there's no low hanging fruit there, then go and do a browse by state. And here's the kind of maps you can find. So uh, this one is uh, a county in Ohio and very detailed, has names of owners on, this, on these properties. So that's really cool. And I love the film strip, of course, because you can see those uh, drawings and photos and other types of content that you're gonna find within the book. So you might find the one map you're looking for, but if we start kind of browsing on either end, we may find a lot of other gems as well. So as we're looking through the card catalog and we're digging into individual collections, I wanna encourage you to use multiple approaches. Um, it's easy to kind of, we have a focus on what we're looking for and so we know how we talk about that, but sometimes it's going to be re recorded in a different way. I've interviewed so many different uh, product managers for ancestry and my heritage and uh, family search and it's really interesting to hear how the collections are collected how they're you know they get access to them then they have to go through the whole process of getting them indexed and we know that the indexers could be volunteers they could be paid employees they could be english speaking or non-english speaking there's a lot of different people working and a collection can be indexed over time so when you throw humans into the mix, you can end up with some real variables. And 
that can give us the false impression when we go to do a search that what we want isn't there but it's those variables that we want to look for so i just want to show you in fact i put here three searches but i ended up adding more searches if i was going to be in the card catalog and i filtered down to maps okay so in the title i'm going to put virginia map there's no virginia maps what a bummer well we don't want to stop there right so I'm going to go back and try it again. And without filtering, if you put Virginia map in the title, look what you got. Virginia Valley Records. Okay, so this is not overall an emphasis as a map collection. But the little uh, search that we did grab that word map out of the end of the title. So with map. So when you click through here, and, and this is a really good reminder because I teach on using Google Books all the time and we think of Google Books as looking for text but it's amazing how you'll find these special maps or photos or images or drawings or other kinds of graphics that are not the emphasis of the book but they're unique they're the only place you can find this item same thing when we're searching through these uh, treasures that we're finding in the card catalog that are not popping up in our regular searches this collection may have that one really unique map that's going to make all the difference. So it's really cool to be able to vary up these searches. Let's try a different one. So that got us one. If we go down to keyword search and we, again, filter down just to maps, if we put in Virginia map, now we're getting three. And it's interesting, of course, Virginia doesn't even appear in the title. But what this is telling us is these three collections have something in the collection that uh, refers to a map of Virginia. So three results there. If you, this was interesting to me, if you just put Virginia in the title, but you filter down to maps, you don't get anything. And I'll tell you, sometimes when I do these searches, I find there's some real inconsistencies. So I don't know if that's the algorithm, if that's just the search engine itself, but we have to assume it's not perfect, okay? It probably never is. They probably always have programmers that are working on it. I don't know. But we wanna take into account that there may be some imperfections, both technologically and of course the human element. Down here, we I just put in the word Virginia. I did a filter down for maps, atlases and gazetteers, and now I get 10 results. So clicking through, I can learn more about each collection, get a feel for whether I think it's really gonna have what I want, search within it, that kind of thing. So lots of different options, more than three searches that I ran and many different types of results. If we don't search for any words, and, and I would encourage you to do this sometimes, particularly if, if you really need something and you're just not finding it through your keyword search. We don't know if we're really using the right terminology that the indexer used, right? So how about just using the filters? If I use the filter for maps, atlases, and gazetteers, filter it down to USA and then to Virginia, I did get seven results. So they're saying that within these seven collections, we may very well find something that taps into the state of Virginia. So lots of different options. So that's maps. I know we all love maps. I love maps because I, you know, we did the Google Earth session and wow, that was a popular episode of this show. And I hope you guys go check it out. Um, you find old maps, you can bring these into Google Earth. So there's a lot of, and it just kind of build them into your family story right there in Google Earth. Um, let's talk about county histories. So lots of county histories in the card catalog. Um, here's an example of one of the collections that I found, the U.S. County and Regional Histories and Atlases, 1804 to 1984. It's a pretty big collection. More than 2,200 volumes of county and regional histories and lots of different states included. And you gotta love these because I just love the, the pictures and um, so much of the information that they have that was so unique just to that time. Kind of gives you that snapshot in time. Postcards, that's another one. Now, as I talked about in the, in the newsletter, I kind of featured this. I wanted to show you a quick postcard search in the card catalog. 
Um, now, logically, and, and this is interesting, I ran this search the other day, so I clicked on pictures and nothing came up. And then I did it again to prepare this slide and I got titles with postcards. So it just goes to prove who knows what's being changed on a regular basis. If you ran something in a couple of weeks ago and it just didn't find anything and you really need that something, you might want to go back and try it again. So I filtered down to pictures. And when we do a search, uh, we see we get like 40 results over two pages. Now I'm all about, I don't have enough time to get everything done that I want to do. So how can we speed this up? I love using the uh, find on page little hotkeys. If you haven't, don't do that regularly, you should. It saves you a lot of time. It adds up. So on my keyboard, I do control and F. I believe on a Mac, although I don't have a Mac, I think it's command and F. And that's going to pop up that little find box that you find at the top of the page. There is a special little search box. So I can put in the word postcard and you can see that it jumped down and it highlighted for me each collection that had the word postcard in the name. So that makes it really fast. You can scan through and look to this page to look at the down below. So I can, I don't have to read all the titles. I can just grab the ones I want, open them up. Um, a fun little tip is if you right click on any of these and you open in a new window and you'll see us doing that next week. I've got this really cool consultation on Irish research we're going to talk about. And one of the things uh, that she was doing for me was as she was finding all these records, she's right clicking on them and getting them all open in separate tabs. And what that does is it lets you look at each one and evaluate before you lose them and you're not going back and forth, back and forth. You can close those tabs as you go. So lots of uh, postcard collections here, 10 results over two pages of, of results. So here's what's interesting in the card catalog. If you um, do a search on the word postcard in a title, the title of the collection, we know that there were collections with that title. I got zero results. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. But that's, you know, it's technology, it's, it's whatever little things have been set up. And so it may not be perfect. So if I had run that, I would have gone, well, there's no postcard collections here, and just given up. No. So let's try it again. How about postcards with an S? 10 results, the same 10 we got the other way. So it looks to me, if you look at these titles, they're all postcards, plural. So it was really interesting to, and keep this in mind, Ancestry search engine did not pick up on the singular version of the word, even though that word is contained, postcard is contained within postcards, it didn't grab it. So remember singular and plural as you're doing your searches. Uh, postcards, great. I got 10 from all over the world. Love it, love it, love it. If I go in the keyword field and I just do the word postcard, then I get one result. And it's not in the title because we're not searching titles. So it's somewhere in the description of this. And again, the other 10 didn't show up, which you would think that they might show up as having the word postcard in the description, but they were using the plural version and it's not picking it up. It's good to know. Okay, so postcards, plural, in the keyword field, that got our 10 results. So uh, it worked both for the title and for keywords. And here's our postcards. I love these collections. Uh, it's really interesting. Many of them have both sides of the postcard, uh, which you could find some interesting little stories that have been written on the back of the cards. Um, I went through and uh, Bill's grandfather, when he immigrated, and I told this story in the newsletter, um, he immigrated in 1912. And he went to Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. And he ended up getting his first job was like installing light bulbs on the outside of the city hall. And he, he tells a story of them literally hanging him out the window by his feet to be able to reach where he needed to install these. And then when he got them all done, uh, I think it was the mayor came along and said, yeah, I, I think I want a different color. 
can you imagine? He didn't stick with that job, that job very long. So anyway, really fun to be able to get images of the places that he talked about in this little autobiography that he wrote. Sometimes coffee is good, sometimes water is good when you're talking. All right, um, here's one you probably didn't know about, World War II newsreels. These are films at Ancestry. So here, look, I did a search on Aleutian Island and it brought up this. Now I looked for this because uh, Bill's father served in the Aleutian Islands during World War II. You can make it full size. United States troops close in on the cold, barren island of Amchitka in the Aleutians. A it's pretty cool the to the see it. Of Kiska, I mean, to see it in moving pictures, away. just to envision him being there. Down at the bottom, you'll see those three little dots. You can do picture in picture. So if you want to go back and read more about this collection while you're watching, you can do picture in picture. But interesting, the word Aleutian got me one result. If I go back and just put an S on the end of islands, let's try it again. Six. So yes, there was a video. I was thrilled, but I'm more thrilled to get six. Okay, the more the better. Look at the bottom. Sometimes you see this little shortcuts and I don't know, I ignore it a lot too, but we're gonna talk about shortcuts. I call them kind of hotkeys because they are a time saver as well. And there are more than even what Ancestry tells you about right there. So can we speed up the process so we can find more stuff? Yes, so you can uh, speed up your search when you're searching at Ancestry with hotkeys. So I'm gonna show you two. One is going to be able to very quickly refine your search and one will give you a new search. So rather than running a search and going and grabbing your mouse and then trying to find the right spot and you click it again and you try to start over again, you can do it right from your keyboard. So here I have a search for postcards and I'm going to click the Australian collection and I run a search and I type in, okay, well, I want Sydney and I pick from the drop down menu that it's in um, New South Wales, click my search. Now, after I run that, I think, oh, well, there's nothing there. But if I click R on my keyboard, it pops that box right back up and I can go back and check, is there, are there any uh, items from Melbourne? And run it again. Or I can go back and go down to the keyword and just put in the word Sydney and see if I get something else. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I got lots of uh, historical postcards. If I press N on my keyboard, I can go back and do that brand new search. So um, let's start over again, clear the slate. I get a nice clear search box right from the start and I can put in a new term and find more. It's interesting that the keyword searches were so much more effective than the title. So uh, I'm gonna have all these hotkeys for you in the show notes so that you can use these on a regular basis. Um, they work really cool. It's just a little faster. It's just a little faster. You can also navigate records quickly with hotkeys. And um, that is very helpful. Again, not grabbing your mouse, being able just to hit something on the keyboard and be able to jump around. We can page back as we're looking at records. Let's go to a census record. So we can go, we have that film strip at the bottom. If we press a key on our keyboard, P, and I think of it as past, the past record, P on our keyboard will jump and go back through the film strip. You don't even have to grab your mouse. So that's very handy and very quick, actually. It's, it's in interesting that they, the uh, website responds so quickly to the quick keys. So P, think of P as past, the past item that we looked at or that's in that film strip. You can also move forward through a film strip. So if we do N on our keyboard, it will jump through. And of course, when you're looking at the census, that's really important, isn't it? So you find the page where your ancestors are and you get all the stuff that you need. We need to be looking at those pages prior and the pages after because who knows who we will find. Chances are 
our family lived near other family. And we'll spot, I, it's interesting, I have gotten to the point now where I'm even spotting names who were witnesses on baptisms and um, best friends at work and all these things and spotting those names in the sense it's, so it's really nice to have that handy little P for past, N for next going forward and being able to quickly jump through particularly census pages. If the film strip is in your way and you'd like a little more space to see what you're looking at, if you press F on your keyboard, it will pop that film strip out. It toggles, so it'll go back and forth. And that's really handy um, versus going and searching for that little X in the upper right hand corner of that film strip and trying to shut it down. You can just press F, think F for film strip, and it will give you just a little more real estate to be able to look at the record that you're working on. I love these. All right, so navigating, how about the side panel? I have talked to so many people who didn't even know the side panel was there, and we're gonna use quick keys to access it. It just gives you more information about the records that you're looking at. Um, I really encourage you, gosh, when you're looking at a record collection, it's exciting to find the record that you wanted, but take a moment to familiarize yourself with the collection. As you read things like the description and the source citation, um, it may bring to mind other things in terms of what you wouldn't expect to find and a new idea for something else that you could find because of what the description and the source are saying is contained within this record. Let me show you how this works. So. If you're looking at a record and you press R, it pops up this side panel and you can see related records. So if you know that this is a good one, they're saying, well, we found Conover in a lot of other records as well. These don't toggle. So it, it's funny, there's just kind of no rhyme or reason to it. Um, but some of the quick keys will toggle what you're doing, some will not. So you can't close the side panel back up by pressing R again, at least when, as I did it last night. But I love this related records because this is that kind of, if you like this, you're going to love that kind of breadcrumb trail. So, and a lot of these are Conover Burkett, my great, great grandfather. So R is going to give us the related, and you can see by looking at that side panel that there's actually kind of like three little tabs, detail, related, and source. This is revealing just the related information. If we click I on our keyboard, we see an index. So you know how it highlights what you're looking at on the record? If there's an index available, you'll be able to scroll through it at the bottom. And I, I really like just using the eye. And you can see at the very left-hand side of the index at the very top, it tells you this is the index. So that um, works really slick and it does toggle. So mostly the stuff on the side panel does, does not toggle back and forth, but things like the film strip, the index, those you can turn on and off as you need them so fast. There's also details in that side panel so if we press D for details, here are the details. So these are the details of the person that we searched for within this record. It tells us very quickly what family number, what dwelling number, household number. So if you're having trouble even finding where you're looking, although they do highlight it for you, you can look over there and find um, those details as well. It also tells you other people who were in the record who are related to that person. So uh, details, very cool. Again, doesn't toggle, but you can just uh, press the X to close that. S will show you the source. You gotta get the source citation for the record that you found. And again, that's that third little tab on the right-hand side within the side panel, but here's the source citation and the source description. So there's information here that we really need to be familiar with, particularly if we're saying, I trust this record, this is the right one. You know, do your homework and make sure you understand what else might be included in the database, what may not be included in it, and get that source citation into your genealogy software. You can literally just use your mouse and highlight the information, copy it, and paste it into a source citation. So you gotta love the hotkeys, they're very quick very effective, but there are more. 
So you can quickly move through a results list. Now this doesn't work on everything, but when you have a list like this, uh, you can go J or K, or you can also press enter on your keyboard and that will open the one that you've highlighted. So J and K will help you move up and down and you'll just have to think of words to associate with J and K to help remind you that what they do, but they go up and down a list like that. Um, I've tried this on different lists. Sometimes it, it works, sometimes it doesn't, it just depends. But that type of list where you saw lots of different items, uh, it does pretty well and then just enter. You don't even have to find your mouse. Navigate to the one that you want, to that line that you want and press enter. And you can use all of these tips um, in other great collections. Here's the Sears Roebuck catalog. And there's lots of these catalogs in the card catalog. Um, so much fun to look at these. I have found items that I wasn't sure what they were. Okay, so press S for source. We can do that. We can do R for related. We can do the D on our keyboard for details just hopping around, learning more about what we're looking at. Remember our um, P for past in the film strip and our N for next to move forward in the film strip. But if we want to get that film strip out of the way, F, film strip, F. And that gives us just a little more viewing room. And of course, you can jump if you want to. This is if there's 1300 pages, you can just do some quick browsing and put any number in that search box, in that little box the film strip box and it will jump to that page in the collection so way faster than trying to navigate your way either way um, use the little box and put in um, a much bigger number much smaller number it'll jump you around the collection really quickly so i love how um, there are just little hidden treasures we just have to remind ourselves that they're there and take advantage of them because they can make the time that we spend so much more effective you're investing money, that's important. So what did we talk about? Using the card catalog. That's just gonna be another one of your go-to, right? We've got the search box, we've got the hints. Make that card catalog a place that you go on a regular basis because only 10% of records are captured in hints. Understanding search, okay? So, so it's a real eye-opener to run some of these searches and realize what I would expect to have happen, maybe it didn't happen. And it's not that it's broken. In fact, it's interesting. After I ran the newsletter article about the postcard search, um, I was showing how to do that and some of the things I found. And somebody emailed me and they said, oh, well, I ran a search for London, England, and I got nothing. And then I ran it in the keywords and I got some and a few and there's not much there. It looks like it doesn't work. And it was interesting. When I got the email, I ran the same search as she talked about, and I found that we needed to vary some of the, the terms that we were using, maybe just the word London, not London, England, and then we got, it was weird, you got all kinds of results. So I wrote her back and I said, well, it works, but we just have to vary it, keeping in mind who's indexing and the fact that different people index at different times. So I was going to include that in this presentation, I went back to run them again, it's behaving totally differently. <laughs> and it's showing way more results. So either that's a fluke, I happened to catch it before, well, before they were gonna work on it, or somebody in Ancestry saw it and then fixed it. I don't know. But what it reminds us is, is that it's our job to um, be the one to be flexible, to try the different variations and to come back to it. Don't be discouraged, come back to it. If there's really something that you've got your heart set on finding, uh, it might pop up the next time you do it. So understanding that there are variables, exploring those unique collections. I just touched on a couple of them. There are so many, there's passport collections and there's Im different immigration collections. I mean, catalogs, postcards, everything. It's really, really interesting to see the diverse amount of content that Ancestry has deep in that card catalog and the hotkeys. I hope that speeds things up for you. Uh, I'd love to hear in the chat uh, which one <laughs> you're going to use or if you know of some I don't know about. Oh my gosh, I don't know them all. A couple of these I did not know about. I haven't been using. So it's always a good thing to go back and just kind of refresh and hone your skills. So that's my top tips. 
Hopefully you heard something new. I know I learned something new in just putting this together for you. And um, certainly Ancestry is one of those go-to places. If you don't currently use Ancestry and you're thinking about it, um, I have a link in the video description below. It'll also be on the show notes, of course. When you use our links, we always appreciate that you um, are supporting us and the show. Um, but that's my only affiliation and that I went and got myself an affiliate link for Ancestry. I don't work for them or anything else, but um, we love when we can find records. So let me go over here. I need to transition over and see what you guys are saying. Um, cool tips on a hot day. <laughs> I love that. Oh, thank you, Jim. The animated graphics. Well, you know what? I, I am such a visual person. I got to see it. I got to see it in motion. I got to know what I'm looking for. It makes it so much easier. Uh, I see that, uh, yeah, I know it's kind of expensive for Ancestry. Sometimes they have their free trial. Um, I'm glad you enjoyed that. Did you know about the hotkeys? Wow. Did, did not know about the hotkeys. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, and, and that plural thing, that was kind of a surprise to me too. The more I use that, the more I vary things up, the more I'm like, oh my gosh, I missed a lot of stuff. <laughs> so it's actually making me think about going back through some of the really awesome finds I have made and ask myself, is there a way for me to vary this? Should I try a plural version of that? I may not have all the goodies and I want to get all the goodies. So um, excellent. I'm so glad you're enjoying it. Okay. So I wanted that that was uh, the top tips. I'm going to have everything for you in the show notes. And yesterday, I created finally a really good landing page for Elevenses with Lisa on the website. So it's under podcast and it's under videos in the menu. It's finally a landing page with one stop shopping. You can go there, you can click to set the reminder for the next episode. And there's a picture of every single episode. And yes, I'm going to add the topics underneath each picture so you can remember what the topics were for those episodes. But it's one click, it'll get you to whichever episode you want to get those show notes. I know a lot of you have become premium members recently, you might want to go back and do the downloads. Um, and there's step by step instructions for pretty much everything we cover. So I have all that for you. And I hope that it comes in super handy. Awesome. Okay, well, let's talk about Adobe Spark because I want to follow up to last week. Um, I loved my, my inbox just lit up. It was so fun. It lit me up. I was just had a big smile on my face seeing everything that you guys were sending in. And um, so let me get my my bearings here. Okay, so I wanted to answer a question. Now I got a question from Elisa about Adobe Spark video, which we did in the last episode, number 16. And she said, Oh, you know, she was going to use the link. I so appreciate it that you when you use our links, like I said, it doesn't cost you anything, but it does support the free show financially. And she went to go check it out. And you can, uh, she said she looked at their website, and they had a free trial for two months. Okay, well, I, I'm going to try this. I haven't done a live web browser before. But I'm up for it if you are. I hope you can see everything there. Um, if you come here, here's episode 16. Let's actually go to my new Lanny page because it's so pretty. Well, there's too many faces of me in there. But um, if we go to episode 16 down here, click it. Um, the link to my bargains page whoop, right there. And that's where you found the Adobe Spark. So it is a 20% off deal. And but you might not want to do that right away. You might want to just try your hand on it. I know some people just wanted a free trial. And she was saying they had a free trial for two free months, you know, and I, there was no email address, so I couldn't reply back. But um, if you click this, it will take you to their landing page. And yes, the deal is here. But up here is the start now free trial. I have my own account, so I couldn't test it, but I'm almost sure if you click that, you will probably get the two month free trial. And if you find you like it, you're making videos, it's cool. If you go ahead and upgrade, it still credits us for sending you there. And I think you'll get that 799 deal. So I think you get the best of both worlds. So check that out. Um, let me go back. Oh, that was so scary. Going, going, doing a live browser. I haven't done that before on the show. Okay. And then uh, we had another question about couldn't get the app. 
and uh, on Android. And so it turned out, I checked into it, Spark says they just created an Android app for Spark Post. They are in the works for the Spark video, so it's coming. So that just means if you're an Android user, can't do it on your phone yet, but you can absolutely create the same exact videos on the website. The main, and go look on the notes for that episode because I showed you a picture of the website. There's a little different spot over on the left where you start your project. Once you start the project, it looks very similar, just bigger than your phone. So it works. All right. Um, and so I want to announce our winner. Okay. What's our winner going to get? Let's look here a premium membership. So I don't know if our, I didn't even check if our winner is uh, a currently a premium member, you will get an additional member uh, year added on to your membership. If you have are not a member, you're going to be a member. What are you going to get? You're going to get, um, my gosh, there's over 50 premium videos, video classes with me, all the downloadable handouts for those video classes that are exclusive for premium members. There's a podcast, there's like hundreds of um, audio shows just for premium members, not part of that free podcast that I do. And of course, the added perk that you get to download um, the handouts for all of Elevens is with Lisa. Our winner is Suzanne Siegel. Okay, so Suzanne sent in two videos. I know, maybe she's an overachiever. I don't know, that's pretty pretty cool. In one week, she got these two videos to me. And um, I was giving you the, the suggestion on making kind of just a fun, go find fun, funny pictures of your ancestors if you don't have any other idea what you wanna do. Lots of you did those and those were awesome. That's what I did the first time I made a video. She took it a step further and she did too. Now the first one was a video scrapbook kind of of her granddaughter during coronavirus, which is still going, unfortunately, but it's a wonderful way to capture the memories. And I loved the fact that Suzanne uh, acknowledged the challenges, the difficulties for her granddaughter, but also helped her see the bright side of it, side of it as well. And the second video that she sent in was uh, dedicated to an ancestor, Hazel Linney Bud Siegel, and it's called The Early Years. So I want to show you just uh, some, two short clips from these winning videos.
Sanger, California, March 22, 1911. Dear Editor of The Independent, As I promised to write to so many of my friends back home, and as some of them wish me to write to The Independent so all of my friends could hear from us, and if the editor will please give me space in his valuable paper, I will try and give you a description of our Western home. The Independent is a welcome guest here. In fact, I don't know how we could get along without it. She really used all the features, didn't she, of uh, Adobe Spark Video. She did, she added narration. Brave, Suzanne, but that's awesome. And you can always redo it if you don't like it. I like the split screen thing. Um, wonderful uses, congratulations, Suzanne. I am really excited. Um, I can't wait to tell you this. So I, I don't wanna spoil it, but next week, um, I am doing a legacy tree genealogist expert consultation. Yes, experts need experts. <laughs> and I am not an Irish genealogy expert. And so I booked a one hour consultation with them. And Kate Ekman is going to be here and she's going to help me. I have my great grandmother and her mother was uh, born in Ireland. And I really, really wanted to know who her parents were. I wanted to get over the pond. Do you have one of those in your in your family tree? I, I've wanted to go to Ireland. I've been to Dublin, that's it. And I wanna to go to Ireland, but I wanna go when I can meet family. So she met with me. It's a fascinating consultation. I think you'll enjoy sitting in on it. Even if you don't have Irish ancestry, you are going to pick up on the methodology, right? Which is really powerful that I think that you could apply to many different scenarios. If you have any Irish ancestry, you are absolutely going to have to be here. And I was almost getting very discouraged. And then we had a breakthrough. It's so exciting. I can't wait to show you. And it's really hard to stay focused on all my work because um, I've been doing other episodes and, and stuff. I was working on the Family Tree Magazine podcast and all I could think about was wanting to take what Kate found for me and run with it. That's this weekend. Okay. Um, so tune in for that. If you know somebody who's got a brick, if you know anybody who's got a brick wall, Irish genealogy, any of that kind of stuff, please share next week's show with them. Let them know we're going to meet here. We're going to have our break, our tea, our coffee, our snacks, our time together in the chat, which I love. And oh, I have another winner. I couldn't stand it, you guys. Your videos were so awesome. I even got some in this morning, which actually were past the deadline, but there were so many wonderful videos. I'm going to award a second premium membership. I hope nobody's left the chat yet. <laughs> um, Vicki Fravel is also going to get a one-year premium membership. Um, Vicki, what a wonderful job. Your video put a smile on my face when it popped into my inbox and I love her title. An ancestor a day keeps boredom away. I think that sounds wonderful. So we are going to uh, head out on this episode with watching her video. I want to thank you so much for tuning in and watching me my friend. Uh, it's always so nice to meet with you here. If you liked this, if you had fun, if you learned about something that you didn't know before that you're excited to use, would you please give us a thumbs up uh, under the video description? And if you're watching the replay, um, leave us a comment. Uh, I love getting your comments. YouTube loves when you give the comments. If you know a tip that I don't know that I didn't talk about today, leave that in the comments as well, because we'll all benefit from it. Thank you so much for uh, watching my friend. I'm going to send out the premium memberships as soon as I turn this video on. See you next week.